Israel has carried out an airstrike on the Lebanese capital Beirut in what it says was a targeted move against a commander of the militant group Hezbollah, which is backed by Iran. The strike happened in a heavily built up neighborhood. One woman was killed and emergency services are still looking for survivors. Israel blames Hezbollah for an attack last weekend in the Israeli occupied Golan Heights, during which 12 young children died. The group denies involvement. From Lebanon, here's our correspondent, Quentin Somerville. Israel's response came just before sunset. A drone attack. Three strikes on a building in Beirut's southern suburb of Dakia. The explosions could be heard across the city. An attack that Lebanon has been bracing itself against for days. The target, a Hezbollah commander, Israel blames for the attack on Majd al-Shams in the occupied Golan Heights. Emergency services here are still working to rescue the injured. At least one woman died and dozens have been left wounded. It's not known if the commander was killed. This is the building that was struck by an Israeli drone, we believe. Uh, three rockets hit the building. As you can see, this is quite a heavily built up civilian area, but Israel says it had the Hezbollah commander, eight holes responsible for the Majal Shams uh, attack in its sights. Now, there are mixed reports about whether he actually made it out uh, alive, but we do know there's been at least one woman killed and a number of people uh, injured here tonight. Uh, this area of southern Beirut was the same area in which a Hamas uh, official was targeted and killed by Israel back in January this year. The big question now, though, is what comes next? Because Israel has said its response would be severe and it said it would take a number of days. So this strike tonight here in Beirut may not be the end of it. A new footage has emerged tonight of Saturday's attack in the Golan. Children playing quietly, then an air raid siren. There was no time to take cover. It left 12 dead, all children and young adults, watching a nearby football match. Hezbollah, which has fired thousands of rockets and missiles into Israel in the last 10 months, denies it was behind the attack. The Iranian-backed group stands shoulder to shoulder with Hamas, but it's far better armed and its fighters more formidable. The conflict here was mainly contained to border areas and military targets, the unwritten rules of this almost war. But Saturday's attack on the Golan on civilians has pushed Lebanon and Israel to the brink. The United States and others have been working to contain things. How Hezbollah responds to tonight's assassination attempt and what Israel does next will determine whether war here is inevitable. Quentin Somerville, BBC News, Beirut. Well, the White House says that an all-out war between Israel and Hezbollah is not inevitable. But, but as you heard there, there are widespread fears of an escalation. Our correspondent Paul Adams is in Jerusalem for us now. And Paul, what's your assessment of the situation tonight? Well, look, Rita, this was clearly a very targeted attack. Israel didn't just lash out after the events of the weekend. It took three days to pick a target and then went after that target. It's also quite noticeable that they have not issued any changes in terms of the home front instructions to civilians. Uh, no indication that the, there is an anticipated uh, significant Hezbollah response. That is interesting. Uh, Israeli officials are quoted as saying that the ball is now in Hezbollah's court. I think the Israelis uh, are convinced that this has been successful. In fact, in the last uh, few minutes, they've issued a statement saying that they do indeed believe uh, that Fuad Shuka, their intended target, is dead. In fact, the statement gives a long account of his history of involvement in attacks against Israel stretching way back into the 1990s. So I think they feel that this uh, was uh, a very deliberate, very precise strike. Uh, the, the Israeli officials have been saying, as Quinton mentioned, that Israel's response will be tough, but that it could go on for some days. So it may not be an end of the matter. And obviously, Israeli officials uh, who've been meeting late tonight will be very keen to see what the response is. I should just point out one other development, which is that there have been explosions that have targeted pro-Iranian uh, Shiite militias in Iraq 
tonight. Now, we don't know who was behind those attacks, uh, possibly the United States, possibly Israel. But when I spoke to a senior Israeli military official over the weekend about Israel's likely response, he did point out, he was at pains to point out, that, that all of this could be traced back to Iran.